What's up, everybody? Welcome again to the Slightly Salted Squad. This week in gaming, episode 34 for July 10th, where we're going to be talking about Nintendo Switch Lite, Whipped Cream Pokemon. Yes, that's a thing. Uh, Lord of the Rings <laughs> and more. We appreciate you watching or listening, whether it be live on twitch.tv slash slightly salted squad or later on YouTube or your favorite podcast network. If you haven't yet, please check us out on Twitter and Instagram for news and updates. Uh, if you want to actually support us besides Twitch, uh, click those follow subscribe buttons and check us out on patreon.com slash slightly salted squad. But most importantly, if you actually want to play with us, for example, Deanna and I will be playing some Overwatch after this, uh, check yes, out sir. our official Discord, uh, which you can link to from twitch.tv slash slightly salted squad. Pretty much all links you need right down there if you're watching this live. If it's YouTube, I'm pointing down to that subscribe and comment. So do that too, because we appreciate that. Uh, but yeah. I think that's enough of that. As always, I'm John at Force Inept. I'm Dion at Underdog. And Mike at Sredge is not here today because he is dead I don't know, to we us. can talk trash because he's not here, right? Yeah. He's yeah. he totally bailed. I don't know. He's learning how to uh, play with uh, games with mouse and keyboard. That's what he's doing. He's trying to figure that out. Still. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. It's a big move. We appreciate that he is making that commitment to getting up. Controllers or <laughs> FPSs, especially. Uh, let's see. The only thing I really want to actually mention before going into the news, and let me just make sure I'm like pulling this all up here, is we have a squad mode that's going to be posted. Um, I don't normally highlight these. I think we'll probably start highlighting them in the future. But yeah, uh, I think that's a good idea. This one was infuriating. Uh, so slash the best and amazing <sighs> Mike slash S Reg uh, wasn't able to make it. So we did have chat. Um, let's see. Maybe he's in the chat right now, but these Matos stepping in um, and we played some Super Mario Maker 2. Actually, as I look at this, I think I have some things to clean up on this image. Uh, but Super Mario Maker 2 and it is clearly not designed for same screen play i mean would you disagree with that one i think it's absolutely designed for same screen play. no i mean like look it's it's about it's about the custom maps that people build so people are building custom maps that aren't designed <clears throat> for multiplayer play especially once we got to jump yeah. on certain platforms and do certain things like that's it's, it's up to the maker to make it more you know responsive more players but that made it absolutely fun I enjoyed it. Yes, I believe this actual image clip here is basically me and Furade about ready to do something. Yeah, you're, o you're over it. Jordan you're over stepping it. through a door, which then negates everything we did. Um, so thank you, these Batos, for that one. Yeah, uh, so we'll highlight these more. Uh, I'm going to clean up this image afterwards, after we play Overwatch. And... Yeah, I think that's it for kind of the normal spiel. Anything else you want to get into before we get into the news? No, let's do it. Okay. Get into the news. Okay, and welcome back. We are going to be going through... I I don't feel like a lot of news stories tonight, so it might be a short episode, but they are pretty some substantial news items, uh, especially one that got announced today, so more on that in a little bit. Uh, but the first, first topic, which is normally about Fallout, Fallout, or Awful Anthem, is actually about both, which is kind of interesting, Jump. and No Man's Sky. Oh. Uh, look at that, Redbubble. You can buy shirts that are I designed that are advertised to me because wow, that's how advertising works. Uh, there you go. I'm gonna just like, close that. Uh, why this ad? Because it's mine. Um, yeah. So No Man's Sky, Sean Murray, um, basically said Fallout 76 and Anthem developers should just be quiet after launch until their games are fixed. Um, so. If you guys haven't followed some of our earlier episodes, we talked a lot about No Man's Sky because 
I think we actually started streaming after really the launch of No Man's Sky, but we talked a lot about it as we it did. started making its resurgence. So yeah. it was almost like two years after the game launched, was they just went dark and then finally came back and now it's they've done a lot of huge updates. They actually have like Beyond as their major update. Later this year they're doing a VR version, um, or not version, but capability for it. And it's essentially a whole new game reinvented. So Sean Murray saying EA and Bethesda shouldn't talk themselves out of this and just pretty much stay silent and come back to it. Um, he said, we went about two years without talking to press at all. And we went about three months without saying anything to the community either. That was really hard. I sat down so many times and wrote the perfect blog post that was going to explain everything about the game's development and the roadmap going ahead, but I could see that it didn't hold credibility with regards to where we're, we were at. So, what do you think with publishers like, or studios like EA and Bioware and then Bethesda? Do you think that's even possible for them, that size? Like, It's difficult with a platform in which you have to give consistent updates every year on the games that they're they're putting out and and updates of the games that they're out it's a little bit it's i think it's easier for a publisher focusing on one specific game that's smaller that yeah they can kind of hide in the shadows but you're gonna keep knocking on bethesda's door whether they're saying anything or not um but i what i don't disagree on is you know we knew a lot of that same stuff happened with no man's sky they were kind of one of the the first in, in putting out a game that did not meet the expectations of what they kind of talked about um and they did sit quiet and the game has had a resurgency uh, it took a while to get there but i don't know but the amount of dollars involved for games like you know fallout and games like anthem where they expect big budgets where they expect several years of continual you know funding development and franchising to make in expansions um I don't. I don't know if that's necessarily that easy. Uh, you know. Yeah, that's fair. I. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because it's kind of li- too little, too late. Like this might be a good recommendation, but let's see. EA the last week or two has said, "Oh, we're going to have Anthem for ten years," and has already kind of talked about some roadmap. I think they've been quieter versus the first couple of months, and then Bethesda comes out um, after Anthem, probably not looking as bad. They've made. I would say decent progress so far, but then talking about this fall of all this stuff, like adding NPCs and all that stuff, like they're, they're setting again, maybe not high goals, but goals that now, like, I'm not sure if it's too little, too late for that game, but now they have to hit these goals. Otherwise it's, it will be a flat line at that point, because if they come out for a second time and can't deliver on what they said, but I don't know. It, it's interesting because No Man's Sky, I feel like, wouldn't have been as big of a failure had it not gotten hyped up as much. Like, if it, I don't know how many E3s No Man's Sky was talked about at, but like, even on the PlayStation main stage, No Man's Sky being like highlighted and about how it's this beautiful game. And the footage they showed at E3 was, you know, these beautiful landscapes. And then the game releases, and it's like, well, this looks terrible. Like, it's not expansive. Yeah. It, it's expansive, but not. I don't know. I, I think I the biggest problem was that it was barren. And, and the problem was they did that whole thing of not really telling you, like saying, yeah, it can be multiplayer. And you, until somebody, you know, finally had a connection with someone else to go to the same exact place at the same exact time and couldn't see each other. And that was just like, oh, what the hell? And mm-hmm. then stuff started coming out about that. And I think that was one of those things. Was like, you made it. You, you like. Whether you said it or didn't say it, you kind of just chose to not say anything and have people right. think that this was something that could happen, but it couldn't. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they learn from their experiences, and, and maybe there are some things that uh, I agree, maybe every second you don't need to, you know, we don't need to hear a thing every minute on Anthem and how they're fixing, you know, just talk about that they're working on improvements, and then it should be kind of quiet, and then boom, give me another update, and give me another update. I'd, I would rather that approach yeah. uh, than constant like because if you keep doing that constantly i'm just going to keep remembering that i'm not playing this game you know 
yeah, that's fair. It's like it just kind of keeps in that news cycle of, oh, wow, that's still a thing. Why is that a thing? If it just came out, you know, like No Man's Sky did, it's like, hey, we've got this huge update. It's a good game now. Then, yeah, maybe you can capitalize on a resurgence. But if it's just that continual beat down, then I don't know. It, I mean, obviously, these games should just release being good the first time. They should yeah. just do that from now on. But um, it's, I heard someone talking um, about the Morimoto quote, like a a late game is late for so long, but a bad game is bad forever. Paraphrasing that. Yeah, sure that's not exactly what we said. But nowadays, it's kind of not that anymore because, like, you just do patches and updates, like Days Gone yeah. and shit like that. It's interesting change, and I think that has provided companies like EA and Bethesda in this instance out because now yes. they can at least have the capability of doing it. I mean, same with No Man's Sky, but it's it's gotten easier for them to be for players to accept bad games because oh they'll get better. Yeah, I so I agree and I disagree. I agree that you have more longevity to if you choose to invest in that game to turn it around. Yeah, that's right. I think the downside is there's so many games in the market now with continual games coming through that when an anthem sucks, I'm going to go play you yeah. know, Apex Legends or, or some something else, right? Um, and that is where you can just lose gamers because there's so much out there that you know it it's a it's a harder grasp to it's going to be harder for ea to say yep anthem's good again come come back come back and play right come back and play i felt like battlefront had a hard time doing that where they did make good content I, i i mean i believe that the game is in a state now for battlefront 2 um that is really good in comparison to when it first came out right new dlc they right. fixed a lot of the the they're way that the loot boxing all that stuff they're still doing stuff for it so they did invest I, I would argue that it didn't make the return that they were hoping for gotcha so i hope that anthem's not in that i mean i listen i would pick up anthem if they made improvements made more content that was um i don't know that gave you more to do and all that stuff i, I would give it a shot again yeah, I, I actually played Same No Man's follow. Sky the first time in, I couldn't tell you how long. Not quite since launch, but practically since launch this past week, just because, I'll talk about later what we're playing, but like kind of a weird point in games, just kind of looking for something. And it it was a lot better. I mean, it's mm-hmm. still, I'm not positive if it's a game I would you know go to all the time, but it it's significantly better and easier. I'm to still get waiting for the VR. Yeah, once VR comes out, and we can do like multiplayer and shit like that. I'm in. Like you can do yep, multiplayer same. now, but once the VR and multiplayer, I'm 100 percent in. Looks like same. a perfect game for it. So. Okay. Uh, speaking of multiplayer, moving on to <gasps> Final Fantasy 14. Get it? Yeah, and I know we probably don't have much room to actually be talking about this. Experts on this, uh, but Final Fantasy 14 lets you run dungeons with NPC heroes now. And it's so much better than real people. Um, I, I'm not going to lie. I kind of had wished Mike would be on to talk about this one. Just because yeah. he is the... I consider myself an MMO fan. But I think he is even more so of the dedicated MMO fan. Uh, but obviously, you know, you play Guild, War II, Guild Wars 2 and a ton of stuff. Guild Republic. What are your thoughts on this? Of just allowing you to run dungeons with NPCs. So, yeah. Granted, I have not played Final Fantasy XIV. I haven't played it. Um, have played those other two games that you mentioned. I mean, look, I... I, I it, it depends on the game. And Final Fantasy is always a weird one where, like, I don't think it's as story-driven as, like, The Old Republic. For the old right. republic because it was the narrative was so tailored to my character i liked the fact that i could have an npc as a as a you know sidekick i liked the fact that you could have one and i could have one so now we have a party of four yeah um, that's fair you know and we were still able to co- to accomplish things without the specific need of larger groups um i don't know other than that if it's not a narrative that really I don't know. I, I, I get tossed between like, 
you know, making the game uh, in a way where you want to group up and want to have that collaboration with other players. And then for that other group, and this is what happened to us in the division of like, yeah. you know, there's that's not an option, not NPCs, but even the fact of matchmaking in that case. Uh, but now we're kind of stuck if you don't have the group that, you know, you need. Yeah. It, yeah, I'm kind of assuming I don't know how I feel because Division did jump out, Division 2 did jump out to me because that would be a perfect thing where we could just supplement our group with enough people to run the raid and actually be able to do it because we traditionally did. Granted, we could have looked for people and all this stuff, but that wasn't really our MO. We just wanted to play with people, like, you know, our close group of friends. We just didn't have eight people. Yep. But then I think about, like, going back to World of Warcraft Vanilla and things like that, where it was, like, 40 people, all of us doing that community teamwork and stuff like that. That's really what sucked a lot yeah. of my time up, but <laughs> made that game and made that game memorable. And even, even when we got into 5, 10, 20-man raids, or dungeons and raids it was really that working together and made that game what it was you always had the looking for group thing which division two didn't have and yeah that could be frustrating i know a lot of people complain about doing pug groups uh, pickup groups Mm -hmm. which is pretty much what this article is like you can run it with npcs rather than you know having to rely on strangers that are probably terrible at the same time that's like I don't know. That's part of the game. That's what makes it an MMO. If it, it's just not, an, it's literally not an MMO if you're just doing it all single player. So I don't know. It's an interesting idea yeah. that I'm curious to see if other games adopt that mechanic. Because the Old Republic, you're right. I hadn't really thought about having a companion that kind of counts for it. You can't fill out a whole group with like, right. it's just me and four companion type situation. But that does add. A huge aspect to it like i could run a dungeon theoretically me and a companion it'd be hard as hell but you could do it so yeah and even uh the old republic ended up adding more things for flashpoints to have like even so i'd have my regular companion but then i could have like the this own generated battle droid and um they started oh, doing no that to some I'm, of the yeah so now some of the flashpoints um like that um What's like the first one that you kind of go through? Um, yeah, the ship, they get boarded and stuff it, like that. Right. So for it. that one, um, yeah, I, I pl- like this is months ago when we started getting back into it again. I, now you can run that by yourself uh, oh, cool. because it gives you like a battle droid. I think it only gives you one extra companion if I can remember. Right. Uh, but, you know, that's that whole fact of, um, you know, I, I think that you're, you're giving more options to other players. Granted, it's not the true way to play yeah um and as long as people know that the experience is tailored to be with other people and so by doing this side option you're not having the full experience then you know it it doesn't hurt um by the way about the division two they are it already is in their public test servers to do matchmaking with the oh uh, good rates so it is coming good yeah they for sure need that Okay, continuing on with Final Fantasy news, but Final Fantasy VII news, a little bit of a blunder uh, today. It was, actually I think it was this morning still, it happened, where Xbox uh, posted for Xbox Germany Facebook page that Final Fantasy VII Remake was releasing March 3rd, 2020, same as PlayStation. Uh, The... If you remember the f- original trailer for Final Fantasy VII Remake, does say first on PlayStation. Doesn't say anything else, so it doesn't say if it's PC or if it's Xbox. Or I mean, it's not going to be Switch, but yeah, PC or Xbox. Uh, but then Xbox did come out and just say, "Hey, we did an internal mistake in the social team. We took the video off immediately. Sorry, no announcement on our side. Big apologies for this." So not. Really much news to talk about, but how? <laughs> how? So, do you think it's coming for Xbox? Uh, I think so. It's just weird for them not to, like, 
I definitely think it is. I definitely think it is. And maybe it is a PlayStation first thing and they effed up. Um, how could... You can't, like, make that, like, make images, have the Xbox with, like, the logo with it and everything like that and be like, whoops, well, it's not coming to Xbox, you know? I don't know. I'm trying to think. I'm just Googling it right now. Okay, so you can now get different Final yeah. Fantasy games yes, on Xbox. you can. So I didn't you know can. that. So I thought it was only Switch. No, because I, correct me if I'm wrong, but 15 was on Xbox as well. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. So I thought that whole thing kind of was in the, was in the past. So I think it's more just about, like, them maybe mixing up the date and maybe they were initially going to get on the same date, but then, you know, PlayStation bought some rights or something like that to have it longer. Yeah, I, it's, it's weird to me. In a new game. Uh, stinkiest Duck, I don't know what to make of your <laughs> comment, so I'm going to just continue on Final Fantasy news. Um, but it's pretty good. It's just weird. I don't know. It's still weird to me that there's Final Fantasy on Xbox, let alone not PlayStation, just because it's that. I don't know. Just growing up, it was PlayStation, it was Final Fantasy. There wasn't like any other off the thing until, you know, the MMO for PC and all that stuff. So, um, I guess I can be accepting of it, but I am curious to see what that window is that first on because there hasn't been any official comments on that one. So yeah, agreed. We shall see. Oh, I can't wait till March thirtieth though. Oh, uh, actually, now that I think about it, I didn't actually put this in the news, but you're a fan of vinyls, right? Hell yeah, dude. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna just do some live googling here. Do it. Hype. Beast.com. Let's hope you're a oh. reasonable uh, website. It is. It is. Uh, Final Fantasy VII original and remake on vinyl. Ooh. So dope. I don't have anything that plays vinyl, but even I am like, damn. Yeah, just the fact that oh, man. It's a Shinra building so cool. and it's the yeah. cloud in each one. Yeah, in each one. that That's the thing that's really cool. Like, even... Sometimes it's just about, like... It's like anything else, right? Like, having a collectible to put on the wall or hang yeah. up. It's the same thing. Like, having that vinyl that you can just kind of, like, put there. Well, I probably listen to it. Maybe, actually, I do, like, some of the soundtrack on there. Uh, but it'd definitely be more of a display thing, for sure. Yeah, you can't do vinyl on repeat, right? I would just do victory <laughs> fanfare repeat and just have that going. Sure, you can. You just have to, you know, <laughs> just manually do it each time, every uh, every time. Yeah, getting the collector's edition. Uh, I think I would get murdered if I bought this as well. So I'm gonna stick with collector's edition. But uh, this is, I feel like, right up your alley. So yeah. Uh, real quick, since we're yeah. on this topic, and and this is one I should have told you to put on the news. Um, the Watchdogs bundle. Have you seen that collector's edition? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, in that collector's edition, I'll let you Google while I talk. Um, they have this really cool, like, skull. It's like a mounted, like, skull with some designs on it and a crown. Um, it looks pretty badass. It's not um, the pig and... mask? Oh, uh -uh. shit. Do you see it? Pulling this up live, everybody. Doing it live. Okay, so you get a Golden King pack just for pre-ordering. That's neat. You get a Lux car skin. But then you get a fucking Coronet mask. Wait, can you wear this? So Holy what shit. I actually wanted to know is, I wanted to know if I could kind of take that crown off. And then, like, I would legit. So I have, like, here, I'll kind of show it. I have this, like, thing. This is where I put my headphones on. Okay. And yeah. if I could get a fucking crap like a skeleton <laughs> head next to my desk and have my headphones on it, done deal, bro. Dude, this is done deal. I mean, and it it's, says and a mask, it's, uh, hey, dude. Yeah, I think and you it can wear lights that. Lights up and stuff. That'd be kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. I'm a big fan of these collectors' edition, including stickers now, because like, I, it's gonna be weird, but have like stickers. I like stickers. Around. Mics and shit. I have them all over my work laptop and all that. Um, 
How okay? How much is this? I think it's like two two hundred and something. One hundred eighty nine ninety nine. Uh, it's rough. It's rough. Yeah. Anyway, you I know that can wasn't earn up to one hundred ninety but... Ubisoft points. So uh, oh, there you go. Oh, Actually, man. I wonder. You probably can't use your twenty percent off. You can use Ubisoft points traditionally in the UPlay store to get a discount. I'm assuming you can't do that for this one. But uh, check on. if you go to yeah, it does say the with the hundred Ubisoft points you can get twenty percent off. And I definitely but definitely forgot this excludes um, pre orders, in game credit packs, and new releases. <laughs> so okay. everything well, people want. Anything that you would, Perfect. that's what you can't do. Uh, and yeah, that releases March third as well. So, damn, that's awesome. But I'm gonna have to do a little more research on that one. I think yeah. it's pretty baller. Okay, uh, moving on to. I'm trying to make a transition here. More mask related things. <laughs> sort of. Uh, that was Cyberpunk 2077. The past few weeks has been having. Um, preparing i guess this cosplay contest they actually posted awesome. a bunch of images so that you can actually create your own cosplay because that's usually for example i've not done any like super impressive cosplay but like star lord i would have to look at things in guardians of the galaxy and like freeze frame and google images and try to figure out you know what the rockets look like and what the jacket look like all that stuff and just try to make it so mine weren't fantastic but we're roughly there. So they give these little links here. These link to zip files, well, rare files, that are each about 300 megs and then have these super high quality images in them. And so I, I'm i only going to show the one character. So this is the female V. But like, okay, cool. Front, back, gotcha. A little closer back. Okay, really close jacket with the patches. Damn. Sides. Sides. I saw the boots. Big, I, like, I clicked the links and saw that big ass file. I was like, yeah. is this a virus? What? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> close up That's on crazy. the pants. Big, uh, uh, I think. Yeah, close up on the carabiner. Close up on the yeah. hairstyle, the face. Like, God, it looks just gorgeous. And. I can only imagine the cosplayers out there just this is the perfect thing for people to be able to yeah. take. So yeah, yeah, you know, think about and I'm not a huge cos cosplayer myself, but I I can only imagine them looking at different images, trying to find right, you know, yeah, freeze the details frame of everything. And shit. Yeah. yeah, the fact that it's like here you go, here's all these high fidelities, have fun. Yeah. It's awesome. And honestly, I just another way to get people excited for the game too. Take these now. And do something of like make a wallpaper or something, which I'm sure people yeah. are gonna do. So, um, just make the jacket for me, please. Just dude, make the jacket. Like I'm not gonna lie, you can buy the jacket. It does not look as good as this, but there's a lot right. of varieties out there already for like not much more than a hundred bucks. So, not bad. Halloween. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. There it is. We'll see how it goes. Uh, let's see. Moving on. No transition. Lord of the Rings. MMO in the works by Amazon Games. So. Oh, shit. Yeah, so Amazon is already going to be doing the Lord of the Rings TV series, which is going to be, I guess, the most expensive production for TV series of all time type thing. But now it looks like they are pulling in that to do a MMO, and it's a free-to-play MMO. Uh, so... Hmm. No dates on it or anything yet. Um, it's by uh, Leu Technologies. So um, that doesn't probably stir a lot of anything in anybody. And it's Amazon Game Studios, which I could not tell you a single game that they've ever worked on or promoted or anything like that. Um, but yeah, yeah it sounds... Sounds promising. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's ah oh man, it is the Lord of the Rings, which is an amazing franchise, and we've seen a lot. We've seen some not good games. We've seen some amazing games. Like, 
yeah, see the, some Lego stuff, but mainly the Shadow of uh, of Mordor or Shadow of uh, is that right? Yeah, Shadow, Shadow of Mordor, and then yep. uh, there was a sequel to that, right? But um, those yep. are good, kind of repetitive, but I had fun with them. Yeah, yeah. Or the, the first one I played. I guess. The second one was really good. Oh, okay, it had all these extra things that you could do. Yeah. Um, there was an existing. Uh, oh, God damn it. Lord of the Rings MMO. And was there? Yes. And I heard it was decent, but like, meh. It was kind of like um, Elder Scrolls type stuff. Yeah, it's literally called the Lord of the Rings Online. Um, yeah. So I heard some mediocre things about it, like not super bad, but had, I guess, a dedicated community and stuff. Um, T Gebs. Uh, if he's out there in the chat, I now played a, quite a bit of it and enjoyed it. So, uh, I went to Amazon's website just to check, like Amazon Games, uh, and they have. So, if you go into their games, you see three things. One's called New World. One's called the Grand Tour game, which is a racing game, and oh. the third one's Crucible, which is a third-person says the last one standing so it sounds like a royale game or something gotcha. like that uh so none of no games that we've like yeah ever really to talk yeah, about exactly grand tour is a great show probably not a great game mm. i'm gonna throw that out there because most of that show is not really about racing it's more about humor and being dumb yep uh speaking of being dumb valve <laughs> says sorry for their summer sale race grand prix thing oh. so they gave away a bunch more games um so yeah i i bought a lot it was kind of weird because i bought a lot of money's worth of games because i bought fancy grounds for a group of friends they all repaid me and stuff like that so i got tons of points for the steam sale but i invested them not knowing what how the hell it worked still don't know how it worked reading this article they don't know how it worked into their different teams so i Put it into the hair because I like rabbits. Uh, this little corgi dog was cute and it was in the lead, but I was like, well, I'm sure if you know they're the lead, if I joined them, there's still a risk they could lose or something like that. But you wouldn't want one team to just always be picked because they're the winning team. But that's exactly what happened. So the corgi team just ran away with the thing because everybody, like, wherever they got point, I guess they just like clicked it and. They just kept winning, so they apologized. Steam said it was, you know, more confusing than they thought. They're giving away 5,000 other games, but yeah. Um, thank you to everyone who participated in the Grand Prix. We realized that the racetrack had some unexpected turns. Uh, uh, we tried to straighten them out when we could, and we'll anticipate the curves better next time. We invite you to, next time we invite you to the races. Um, as an extra gift for those that participated, we've randomly selected 5,000 users that contributed from any team, which is good, in the Steam Grand Prix to receive the top game from their wish list. Users that were randomly selected will receive their gift within 48 hours. Yeah, I've checked. There was... Have not won, that I can tell. Wah, wah. Wah, wah. Yeah, um, a lot. It was just... It was just a cluster, man. It was a confusing yeah. method to try to get people to get involved. There was a whole thing, if you notice in that segment where they said, like, the top game of your wish list. So there was a whole thing about, um, you know, getting the chance to win a game off your wish list. But no one knew if that was the top game or not the top game. So what people were doing is deleting their uh, other games off their wish list, which if you yep, want a free game, you end up impacted get, yep, and stuff. Developers are impacted because it's not, you know, you're keeping your AAA game because that costs more money than your indie games. And yeah, it was just a mess of a system, but well, if they're doing the right thing to kind of like get it back in order. And But like, they're making tons of money off these sales, man. I mean, yeah, I don't, I, know, I don't know. I don't understand how Steam, you slash Valve, you used to make these yeah. amazing video games and then you like stopped. And now all you're doing is making these really, well, besides the Valve Index and other projects I'm sure you're working, Steam Redesign, all this other stuff you're actually doing that's cool. You're doing these freaking mini game things that are just super convoluted. Just give points. And then the more points you have, the more chance you have to win. There you go. Done. 
There it is. Solved it. Solved it. Okay. Moving on to the biggest news of the day. Nintendo Switch Lite. So this just got released today. Um, this is a video from Nintendo UK. I think it's published on the normal one as well. So before I kind of like play and show the 360 view and everything, it is the Nintendo Switch. It is not dockable. The, there are not removable Joy-Cons, so they're built into it. The controllers are a little different. So there's a D-pad on the left rather than the arrow buttons, which uh, apparently they also confirmed future Joy-Cons will not have that, which kind of sucks because I know a lot of people wanted that on the actual Switch. Um, there's no rumble function. There's no obvious movement function or anything like that with the Joy-Cons. So, for example, one to Switch or a game that requires that, you would need to have separate Joy-Cons to play, but... If you're looking for a handheld Switch, you got this. Um, looks pretty slick. Uh, the price is $199.99 MSRP. Uh, comes in the three colors, the gray, the yellow, and the turquoise. And it will be available September 20th. One other thing, though, that they don't actually talk about in this video, which I found a little odd, but is on their... Nintendo Switch Lite official site. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. You've got, okay, yeah, you can play all the handheld games, cool. And you got the different colors, cool. And then you've got the Nintendo Switch Lite Z there it is. Zashian and Zamazenta edition. There it is. For th oh, I thought it said 299. Um, yeah, $199.99. So, same price. Um, you don't get the game, though. So, there's that. But, it's freaking pretty badass. Yeah, that's I'm, a, I'm that's, a fan. I'm that's a fan. an awesome one. I'm going to scroll up here because I saw this bundle. Uh, okay, that's just normal bundles. Blah, no one cares. But, yeah. So, I don't know how to say it, but it's a cool bundle. For the exact same price. So that one will be available November 8th though. So you would have to wait you know, a month and a half on that one. But that is the same release date as Pokemon Sword and Shield. Have any intention of getting this yourself? I mean you have a Switch. Yeah. And I was talking to somebody at work about this actually. I, I don't. I think it's a great idea. Had I... Had this come out at the same time as the regular Switch. The regular Switch, I probably would have thought about it. I'm not sure really which way I would have gone gone because I didn't know how I would be playing the Switch, I guess. But yeah. I am and now you know you're always probably being yeah. me always doing it on uh, always portable, unless you know, we you know. do squad mode. Squad mode yep. is the only time I ever dock it. Uh, I never have it hooked up to my TV or anything. I'm always yep. just handheld. I'm playing in bed, I'm playing on the go, play it. Shoot, I'll sit outside with my dog and I'll play it. So I, I not gonna lie, I'm a little tempted if I could convince my like girlfriend to also play the Switch. That would be a great opportunity. Yeah, I got you. Or if I had, yeah, it's the I, Pokemon one. There you go. You can have my <laughs> old one. And I'm gonna still use it for squad modes, but right, right. Yeah. So games like Mario Party, though, for example, you would need to have separate Joy Cons, which kind of sucks. And obviously, you wouldn't be able to dock it, things like that. So, certain games, yeah, you're going to have limitations on. But for the vast majority of my play, this would be perfect. And um, it is cheaper. I'm scrolling up here. Yeah, because That's the other big. one's 300 bucks. So, which, yeah, 359 for the two games. That's actually not a bad deal. But yeah, so knocking 100 bucks off, it's not bad. And it looks no, slick. Um, yeah, I know a lot of people are about that yellow. I'm not personally not, but it's sharp. Yeah. How about uh, you? Definitely. I mean, it it's it's everything you wanted back in the day of of having like a handheld game, right? Like this is this is this is the dream, right? Um, I I won't personally pick it up for myself. I just I don't even I I've been playing my Switch probably a little bit more, but I I can't justify it enough to to go to this. Granted, I do have it docked mostly, uh, or not docked mostly. Yeah. Um, 
my i do think about it for my nephew though i was always i, I heard that so there was the light stuff but then there's also rumors that there'll be like a a plus version right a more enhanced version my thought then was like oh i might give my nephew my current switch and then like get that plus one but maybe i'll be you know a nice uncle and give him the nice pokemon one and hand that over to him no you won't now maybe I'll keep that and be like, look, I got you a Switch. There you go. Uh, I have seen some memes already coming up about these kids going like, oh, I've got a skateboard backpack. I'm going to the skate park and playing my Switch. Or I'm going rock climbing, but I'm going to play Zelda and rock climb instead rather than actually do physical activity. So, okay. Um, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, it's like the people that like, here's my Switch and we're at a basketball court and we're all putting our switches <laughs> down with the kickstand and we're playing NBA yep. on the switch instead of playing basketball. Yeah, like that's that's what happens. In my life. I've done that at a bar and I've done that at a movie theater. So I'm that guy, but not. I know you're that guy. Bar. We usually guilt you when you do that. You're that's like, true. Come on. Oh, John, you're an idiot. Why would you do that? Okay, <laughs> give me a Joy-Con so I can play too. That's how that conversation <laughs> goes. Fair. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I It's a good move by Switch. It's kind of interesting. I think it's going to lead to some confusion as far as not having separate Joy-Cons and some games require that. Uh, it's going to be a little weird to Prime Message, and I'm sure they'll get some complaints about that. But um, it's I think this is a great thing. September 20th, I mean, it's well ahead of the holiday season. I think Switch is going to kill it again this year for the holiday. So. Plus... November 8th is Pokemon, which we're going to get Sword and Shield. Um, I just kind of skipped through this video. This came out a couple days ago uh, where you're going to get new Pokemon like Yamper, the electric ball fetch Pokemon. That's just no, a that was good. Corgi. Keep using that voice. Yeah. Uh, he's a Pikachu Corgi. That's basically what I get out of that, right? That's what the fans wanted, John. That's what the fans want. Um, let's see. You got that one. Then you got... I got this fucking one. A whipped cream Pokemon. El Creamy Fairy Sweet Veil that shoots you with your cream. Uh, it's provocative. It's provocative. It's got strawberry... People going. I'm not sure if those are breasts. I'm not sure why this is like lagging, too. It's too That's much, weird. like, the, the graphic quality is so high, your computer doesn't know how to render. Too much sweet uh, cream. This cream-type Pokemon. And, and then it does, I'm going to jump ahead a little bit. The Giga it Max, whatever, out of its strawberries. turns into a motherfucking cake. Yeah! Turned up. What is happening to these Pokemon? Okay, and then there's, like, an actual, like, okay, that's a normal Pokemon. Um... Yeah, that one badass one. Duraludon. Oh, shit. Dragon type. Light metal, heavy metal. It's a weird looking, though. Like, Yeah, it still looks funny. Its neck is like, I don't know. It's just yeah. weird. But well, in the... Than, oh, wait. Uh, and then the last one, which actually I think is kind of like the most normal one. It's like a piece of coal. Roly coly. Steam engine yeah. heat proof. Rock Pokemon. Yeah, okay, that one looks like normal Pokemon. Whip yeah, cream Pokemon, a though? Geodude type thing. Pretty straightforward. Who wants to have a giant birthday cake fighting on their side? I do. Sign me up. Literally, watching this the first time we saw it, I was literally, why don't they just have a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man? Come on. Oh, that's Easy true. opportunity. That's true. Come on, slackers. Why don't you Photoshop that in that Nintendo? Ooh. Come on, son. Shit, I should do that. Or make a shirt and put on Redbubble. Like <laughs> I'm giving oh you my all God. I so want, many, I so want many innuendos with cream Pokemon. Uh, oh, my God. I can't wait. Uh, I'm going to make some notes on that one. Um, but yeah, so there you go. There's more Pokemon. That's That's a thing. Yeah, they're really run. They're reaching for ideas now, but can't blame. There's like a fucking thousand of them. I know we talked about Dexit um, a while ago, but does that concern you not having the ability to truly catch them all? 
I it does not that I probably would have anyways because I always have high aspirations to do that type of stuff and I never do I it feels like it's counterproductive to what the game is that is what Pokemon is it's getting them it's catching them all it's being the best and having them all etc that's what I'm used to at least yep so yeah that's a problem to me but then at the same time it's like who the hell has time to catch to there's catch like 800 all. and whatever Pokemon currently plus however many they add in this generation so like probably close to a thousand Holy yeah shit. no one's got time for yeah. that yeah I agree except for they did just make a lot of this a lot easier with the Pokemon home and being able to yeah. put, submit things that way True. like it's just like you just implemented or about to implement this and it's like this is perfect like this could be the tool that you could finally really link everything together and uh, I think it's unfortunate I think it's okay though there's already a ton in this game me catching trying to catch all of the ones in this game is going to be a challenge in and of itself so I'm not really stressing about it but it's just one of those things that like I really wish that you could have all of the nostalgia of all your Pokemon from like back back then into this yeah but it's fair I mean I have a decent amount through uh let's go pikachu and stuff like that that and yeah. pokemon go that transferred through that and all that stuff so that, that would be very cool to do that uh just yeah weird also bay just noticed bay. watching this ripped jesus ripped <laughs> look at bay fighting type expert kind of she up. don't skip tab day bro and then you got this uh creepy ass little this reminds me of oh my god it reminds me of Tales of Nerdy on Monday mornings. <laughs> I was going with um, Hunter Hunter. I can't think of the creepy oh. villain. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, but I yeah, remember. speaking of Tales of Nerdy, so right. yeah. Okay, let's see. Moving on, I think that's it for the news. Uh, moving on to some deals, we got. Overcooked on the Epic Games Store, free through tomorrow, July 11th, if you're watching this live. Um, otherwise, if you're not watching it live, told you about it on episode 33. Should have gotten it already. Uh, then starting July 11th through July 18th, Torchlight, which I don't know really anything about, um, but free on the Epic Games Store. So add it to your library. doesn't cost anything. Just add it. You don't even need to download it. And there you go. That's all I got for deals. Um, going on to what are we playing? Chat, let us know what you're playing. But DM, what are you playing right now? Ah, uh, let's see. So I just finished my friend Pedro. That was a pretty fun game. Um, I streamed the end of it on Saturday. Um, I actually thought I had a lot more, so like I got like thirty, forty minutes in the stream. I was like, oh, this is the end. <laughs> um, so it was a cool game, definitely fun to play through, and it definitely has some replayability, but I do think that I liked Katana Zero a lot more. Um, okay. I think there's a lot more there, um, and a lot of new mechanics. Um, but it was cool uh, with that game. I think the next game I'm going to go through, slash games, is the Uncharted series. So I never beat all of the Uncharted games. and I know, yeah, I know. This is crazy, right? Um, I've only Terrible. beat the first one. So, I have them all. Gotcha. Because I, I bought that collect, the one that has like all of them, and then I bought Uncharted 4 by itself. So, um, I think that's the one, because I think it's an easier game to stream and kind of just play through. It's pretty oh, yeah. linear, so yep. um, I think that's what's next up for me. But, uh, yeah, I was glad I knocked both those games out. That's awesome. Um, yeah, they're... As most everyone knows i have a terrible time about actually finishing games but uncharted were ones that i definitely plowed through um i have not beaten or really played much of the it was like the side one it was like it was the lost yeah. tales or something like that it was the one with the two uh female protagonists which yep it was good it just i remember it came around out around the same time as some other huge game i was like okay i'm playing that one so yep Cool, that's exciting now. Uh, let's see, I am playing Final Fantasy IX, playing Super Mario Maker 2, so those are just kind of ad hoc on the Switch when I've got some time. Um, 
I've been downloading those kind of random levels on Super Mario Maker 2 and doing some endless challenge stuff rather than playing the main game right now. Um, main game is good. It's just... Uh, I don't know. It's a lot more fun to do the user-created ones and just fucking rage. Like, uh, Andy Cortez from Kind of Funny put one out there that I cannot beat. And I don't think, honestly, he can beat it either. So, fuck him. But there's that. Uh, for... PlayStation, I'm playing Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I've kind of trailed off on that a little bit. I hit level 52, I think, now, technically. Like, you get to 50, which is your max, and then you get, like, mastery levels above that. So, Have um, you beat the main story yet? Yes, I I beat the main story. Now there's lead-up to, like, stuff. DLC that I'm pretty much at the end of that, too, which I've really enjoyed. I just haven't gotten the DLC yet. Um, right gotcha. now, I'm just going off and killing all the cultists, though, which I don't normally do in those type of games, but I'm, like, so close. I have, like, three left out of the 30, whatever, so I'm like, okay, I'm just finish them. Um, so, yeah, enjoying that. And then PC, I am just kind of all over the place. I played some EVE Online. I played some No Man's Sky. The Old Republic sounds really good to me. Uh, when we were mm. talking about that earlier, yeah. Uh, play. We're gonna play some Overwatch tonight. Played a little bit of that last week. Um, Destiny two. I tried. I just didn't get into that one. I don't know. It felt repetitive really quickly for me again. Uh, Apex Legends. I got on the other day, so it's just like it's really ad hoc because I just don't have that game that right now. I'm like I have to play. Like Apex Legends was that earlier in the year. Um, Shit, Apex Legends has really been that main game this year. If I'm thinking about it. Uh, Knights of the Old Republic 1 and 2, though, I just saw an article come up that there are these... New mods. New mods to make the images. It's like a 3 gig graphics rehaul or something like that. So uh, I did launch Coder 2 a week or two ago and was kind of playing it, but I was like, man, this is just... Shitty. Coder 1 I played fully on my phone. Enjoyed that because it was my phone. It seemed good for my phone. Playing Coder 2, though, on the PC, you're just like, damn, this does not age it's, well. Um, it's dated. Yeah, and that's funny, yeah. too, because Coder 2 is the one that I probably would play again. I mean, I have Coder 1 on the phone as well, but I've, I've gone through that one so many times. I love it. It's one of my favorite games of all time, exactly. but I haven't... Um, I haven't. I think I've only played quarter two once. Like I've only beat it once. Same. And I haven't gone back. Same thing. So, and that's yeah. what I I played it like when it came out in high school. I think probably for yeah. me. So same. Long ass time ago. Out. Mm -hmm. And that's what I don't remember the story very well at all, and I feel terrible about it because I'm playing like Galaxy of Heroes on my phone. That's what actually got me into it because it's like characters from them. Like I barely remember what happened with this guy. So yeah. Yeah, so I might actually kind of power through that because that's not that long of a game and it's decent, so. Well, cool. Uh, let's see. We'll stick around still up for some Overwatch. Let's do it, man. Cool. Okay, well, thanks everybody for watching. As always, whether it's live on twitch.tv slash Lightly Salted Squad or later on YouTube or your favorite podcast network. But stick around for a few minutes and we will jump on some Overwatch. So we will be back shortly. Till then, stay salted. See you guys soon. Bye.